what's up in the Bibles? What I want to preach here today is not a good message. I'm sure it's going to be a message that you must always remember. Um, let's read. Maybe we can start with the book of Philippians. One twenty-three. Let's check. Philippi one twenty-three. Let's read from twenty-two to twenty-three. Are twenty-two ya yona. Yes. If, however, it is to be life here, and I am to go on living, this will mean useful and productive service for me. So I do not know which to choose. If I am given that choice, but I am hard pressed between the two, I have the desire to leave this world and be with Christ, for that is far, far better. Read that verse 23 again. But I am hard pressed between the two. I have the desire to leave this world and be with Christ, for that is far, far better. Let's, let's pray. Thank you. For this word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's write the word. Let's talk about the word. We need to understand the word. Paul had that understanding. Because of that, we have these words that he's telling the church. The Philippians church was a very good church. Paul was a church that stood with him. A church that supported him on his mission. But we hear what Paul is telling them here. He was saying he doesn't know what to choose. Understand when Paul said, For me to live is Christ. But this verse 23. Read that verse again. But I am hard pressed between the two. I have the desire to leave this world and be with Christ, for that is far, far better. Can you have that desire? It is not easy. Because we don't understand the word. Paul said that is far, far better than to be recognized by his church than living life and doing his affairs in his life. But he sees going to be with the Lord. Living this world. He see it far, far more better. There's, there's something that Peter spoke about. In 1 Peter. Let's read from 2. Let's say chapter 2 verse 11. Chapter 2 verse 11. What Peter said. Peter. Ori, beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from the sensual edges, those dishonorable desires that wage war against the soul. Did you hear that? Yeah. Peter now is saying. Be a stranger. It's better you become an alien in this world. 
because there are things that fight your soul. I was looking at this verse, I found that most of the time we look at the issue of those dishonorable desires. We look at those things that fight our own soul. Without looking on the issue of we have to be strangers. A stranger is a person who has come to visit. You know the reasons why we are so much connected and attached in this world. Is because we don't see ourselves as strangers. We are strangers. Victory starts in this world. When you begin to see yourself as a stranger. Tell anybody, can you see yourself as a stranger? If you see yourself as a stranger. You will understand that you are in a borrowed time. You visited. You are and there will be a time to go. Can you tell somebody there is a time to go? Can you just be ready to serve God faithfully? Because your soul is still mentioned. After you visited, there are things that you, did, you, know, you need to know that are there to fight your soul. So after you visited, your soul is still going to be required. Are you hearing that? So what are you going to say after you have wasted your time. The Bible says abstain from the sensual urges. Whatever that is sensual, it entices the flesh. So that you defy what God said. You know, in First John 2, Verse 14 to 17. To verse 14 to 17. I just want us to read that verse so that you understand. Let's understand this word. It says what? I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has existed from the beginning. Mm. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and vigorous and the word of God remains always in you. And you have been victorious over the evil one by accepting Jesus as Savior. Carry on reading. 15. Do not love the world of sin that opposes God and his precepts. Nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust and sensual craving of the flesh and the lust of longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father but are from the world. Did you hear that? Amen. Which verse is that? It's verse 16. Read 17. And then 17 says, The world is passing away, and with it, with it its lust, the shameful pursuits and ungodly longings. But the one who does the will of God and carries out his purpose lives forever. Did you hear something there? This world is passing away. The one who does the will of the Father will stay forever. The one who does the will will be around. 
But I want us to look at this verse. With three parts. Read that verse again. 14. 14. Uh -huh. 14 says, I have written to you fathers because you know him who has existed from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and vigorous. And the word of God remains always in you, and you have been victorious over the evil one. Stop there. This is the thing I want you to understand. In this world, there is the evil one. And for you to live and overcome this world. You must behave, you must have the word of God. Can you tell me for you to live and overcome this evil world? You must have the word of God. Because he who rule in this world is the evil one. Can you read 15? Verse 15. Do not love the world of sin that oppose, opposes God and his precepts. Nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Can you hear that? Amen. The evil one is there to lure you to love the world. The evil one is there to lure you so that you forget the word to overcome him. Begin to love everything that happens in this world. Read 16. And 16 said, For all that is in the world, the huh? lust, the, the sensual craving of the flesh, and the lust and longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, meaning pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. Did you hear that? Amen. The world is having power to produce its own thing. Those four things are of the world. Uh, those are entertaining our flesh. Attracting our eyes. All those things are of the flesh. They are of the world. Don't love those things. You know, today, uh, our church today, is focusing into the things of the world. It is no longer an issue of saving souls. It is issues of what you can get. If you don't get it, you are not a child of God. Here the Bible says, don't crave on those things. Because they entice your soul. And they are controlled by the evil one. Now I'm beginning to understand something. Which I want to share with you. That is the reason that God won't give you things easy. Do you know why God cannot just give you when you pray? Because he wants to teach you that those things, they are not there for you. They can be used by Satan to take you away from the good. He will leave you to understand suffering. That's why the Bible says, he who suffer must pray. That's why Bible says, he who suffer must pray. He wants to draw you close to him first. When you are close to him, you will begin to understand that anything which is not of him, is, 
must not be there to control you. Can you, can you just tell your neighbor what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor that there are levels in life. Any level serves a purpose. And God will never just give you things. 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 The reasons why he can just deny you some things. He wants you to have the word. Rule by the word. Not rule by the evil one. Because the evil one. Can entice people by the craveness of things. Desire of the things of this world. If you are hearing me say I hear you. We need to reach a level whereby whether we are blessed or not we are still having the same character. We need to reach a level whereby whether things are tough or not we are still maintaining our stand in the Lord. Because we know that all these things are passing around Today when I was going outside, I took a long time to drive a car. I tried to reverse it out. From where I parked it. Until Andres came. He saw that I was struggling. And then he went back to take the key of another car that was blocking me. And I'm just hearing somebody opening the door, closing and starting and starting. And then I was lazy to go up and take the key of the car. So I was trying to reverse it. And this makes me to look around. When I'm looking around, I see these cars. And I say, many people want these things. But look how str I'm struggling if it's a car. If I had one car here, it was so smooth for me to remove but it. But I brought this car, they even make me to suffer. I don't know if you are here. Listen, the many blessings that you are crying for. The day you, you get them, you realize you don't need them. If you are staying in a double story house and you are three, the day the two people are not there, any sound send a message. If you can hear boom in the night, you are supposed to wake up and say, I bind you. I scatter you. you know, there are some people who are sleeping in a shack. Sleeping the whole night. But any sound in a double street. But any sound in a double street. These blessings make us suffer. And you are crying for them. And when I was in Lela. You are crying for them. Anything that you need in this world really makes you to suffer. If you want to see yourself, just get a job. In the morning, you are supposed to wake up five o'clock. That time of sleeping. The time of resting is Five o'clock. Five o'clock. You must be on the road. You must be on the road. And later you are coming back. You are going to sleep on the same place. And the first day you will be testifying here. God has blessed me with a job. After three months, you will be saying, I'm very tired. So this blessing of this world makes us tired. Because they are not there to satisfy our souls. Everything in this world, there is too much activity. That really, really affected us. In John 16, verse 33, Jesus spoke with the disciples. Let's read that verse. I have told you these things 
so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, meaning be confident, be un undoubted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. Can you hear that? Jesus says, you see all the story I was telling you. Understand that you will have problems in this world. Someone was explaining why children when they are poor, why they cry. Why it's because of the world. The environment around. When a child is in the womb, he cannot cry. Because it's the comfort of his mother. But when the child was given birth to the world, he or she began to hear this wind. The child is forced to cry. There's no child that when he was born would say, when he was born after this happy birthday too. Doctors will run away. Because this world, it have got many winds and and colds. There's a lot of things that are wrong. So Jesus said, when you're a child of God, you will meet that. Because remember, you are born now. Not by the will of man. So there's other situations that you go through. The first one is tribulation. There will be tribulation when you're a child of God. If you're hearing me say, I'm hearing He says, I'm telling you all this. That though there were problems, I have overcome the world. Even you have overcome the world by accomplishing what you are here for. Jesus promised that Jesus it is possible when we are in his way to overcome the world. If we are outside of God's will, we can be trapped by our desires. We can try to be like other people. We can be ruled by circumstances. And we end up being of the world. One day the world will pass by. What will happen with us? When the world goes away and you are part of it, the Bible says it will be thrown in hell. Even you, you will follow it. All the cars you are seeing, all the factories you are seeing, all the business you are seeing, all the clothes you know, thrown in hell. Even your body will go to hell. Because you have to die and is so important. If you are hearing me say, So, John 16, verse 33, it shows their tribulations. You will be distressed, depressed, you will be challenged. Nothing will be easy. Like I was telling you. Don't believe in a magic. If things come easy like this, it's magic. They will go like that. And the devil cannot just give you things and for free. You want to give you those things because you need your soul. When now you are enticed by those things, you will lose your soul. Your soul is so important that you need to overcome this. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you're hearing me, say amen.
Look at this verse. Arle men lengta bachi. Because I'm reading verses now. Ka hore ke bala di verse ya na John. Read Matthew 5. Are ba leng mola go Matthew 5. Verse 14. Matthew 5 verse 14 to 16. To 16. This is our behavior in this world. Ke me khwa ya rena na mo lefatsing lona leke. It says You are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your father who is in heaven did you hear that verse like will ever say jesus says when you are living here in this world which is passing away which is having tribulations and bring distress be light when i was siecha to other people o batho ba bangwe because whatever you are going through ka bana ka moka tsho kopana le tsona le bona ba kopana le tsona how you handle them ka moko wena o di tshwarang ke taba ya botlhokwa put a light where it belongs wena ba ya le siecha mo se tshwanelang go dula go ona by the word of god which is the light ka le ntjo la modimole le leng siecha even yourself be the light le rena re beng siecha the word of god which is the lamp ka le ntjo la modimole le leng siecha that try to lighten where you walk sa go le ka o bonegela mo re sepelago even you be the light le lena le wena e ba siecha if you are here we say amen ale ntwang kere ya ne re amen this is the time that when you are being challenged ke nako ya ha o kopana le challenge you look at your life o te lebelela wena bo philo because many people are looking at you ka re ona le ba bangwe ba o lebeletse wena put the light where it belongs this world will bring all challenges to you. stand your ground as a child if you are hearing me say read this verse Luke 9 verse 24 verse 24 it says what ring forever wishes to save Ya dume dumang o pulusha. His life in this way. O pilo ba ha ile fatsing le. Will eventually lose it. O to latelwa ke bona. But whoever loses his life. Mara yena latelwa ke bo pulusha ha. This well for my sake. Adiela na. For my sake. Adiela na. Is the one who will save. Ki ena ya tla bo pulusha. for the sake of the word o diela le fatse you cannot separate jesus with this word o ka se aroganye ke borena jesus le le fatse le ever loses his life yena ya la thelwang ke bo phelo jo ga e time of tribulation in the world ka nako ya ditaiso le fatseng le sickness in this world ba lwetse a le fatse le na le o thaelelwa ka ra le fatse le na le that brings a stress or the stress ka tshe ditlisang o ghatelelwa those things are there to search dilo tse go na go nyakana le bophelo jwa lena you need to stand your ground o thoka ho yema mo ta emeleng go yema say i will stand my ground e re nna ke ta yema mo ke tshwanetse go yema if you read that verse it says ha le bala verse e la ire don't lose your life o ska la thelwa ke bophelo ba ga it's possible wa gona la ro la thelwa because when you are being challenged ka ra ha o ntse o kopana le challenge you forget that this world is passing o ta le ba lo le fasile kana le ya feta There's a revelation that I found. Ona le kotullo ye ke ithotseng. After I saw a dream. Kamra o re ke bona toro. Three times of a hell. A ra ro ke bona di hell. And then the, the last time is when I saw myself in the entrance. La ma thomo la ma fello ke nna ke te bona ke me monyako. And I see the operation of the hell. Ka bona uri i shuma ka mogwamang ele ye. Which is really very bad thing I've never seen. Trailing MP ga gola sa ga ke ibona. And later I I got this revelation. And I come ra mo ka thola kutulloshi. That all of us. O re ka mo ka rena. We are given chance to prove. Re filwe monyeta wa u bontsha. In life here on. Ka ra bo phelo bona mo lefatseng le. 
that we want to go to heaven. We deserve that. Because Jesus came to the world. We are given chance to prove that we understand or acknowledge him. That he came, as you said, he came to overcome the world. He came to die. And if we understand that, by believing, by living that kind of life, we can prove that we know that he came and we want to go to heaven. So we are also going to fail our past. We can decide. It is our life. You decide. That's why this verse. That is why we say that don't lose your life. When you see those challenges coming, don't lose. The Bible says, if you wish to save your life here, and try to find some ways of making you to be like you are living better You will lose your life through death. When death comes, you will be taken to hell. But if you lose your life by following the commandments, the word of God, by following Christ, you will save your life from here. You lose here, you will save here. If you are hearing me say amen. If you are hearing me say amen. When I was looking at this verse, I began to understand that most of the time, we talk about John 3 verse 16. But we don't understand it. But let's read that verse. I want to explain that to you. Because we are reading 16 only. Without going to 18. So today we will read 16 to 18. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his, only, his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world. That is to, in, to initiate and fi a final judgment of the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes and has decided to trust in him as personal savior and Lord is not judged. For this one, there is no judgment, no rejection, no condemnation, but the one who does not believe and has decided to reject his, him as personal Savior and Lord, is judged already. That one has been convicted and sentenced because he has not believed and trusted in the name of the one and only begotten Son of God. Did you hear that? Amen. When we read that verse, we understand that the world is not the earth. The world is us. Everything, us, everything that is in the world is not the earth. God loved that we must live here. God loved that we must live here. He created this earth so that we must live on it. From day one, God had a plan to put us in. But it's only when Satan came that the plan of God failed. But God decided to prize to bring back this world. He could not buy us without this earth, without this curse, without this house. He really loved his son. But there was nothing that he can 
take back this word. He looked at this word. And equated it with his son. And exchange it. Bring for this son. And say, I'm buying the word. My son, if he dies here, I will take the world back. So therefore, it means when we are here, we are in a land, we are in the world, that God brought it back. But we need to be aware. We need to take a decision of understanding that this world was taken by Satan. But God brought it back. Therefore, we have to live the way God wants us to live. Like before Satan win this one. Let me say it again. God wants us to live according to the plan he had before. That's why he brought this. That's why Jesus. He brought Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus. they take back the word. I don't know if you are hearing. So now he wants us to live that life. And how can we live? We live by believing in Christ. We live by following Jesus. We live by doing what he says. Even when we are in this world. Which God doesn't mind about it. But he brought it back. We can still live like we are living in heaven. We can still live like what God has planned before, before, before Satan came. Satan before Satan came, before Satan came, God blessed the man. Before Satan came, there was no sickness. Before Satan came, there was no sin. But he brought back the land. He brought back the world. So if we can truly live by his word, we can overcome what the world can do, which is from the evil man. If you are hearing me say amen. When Jesus was tempted, there was things that Satan did. Because the evil one which was Satan was still owning the, the, the world. He showed him all things. He showed him all the mountains. He showed him everything. And so if you bow, I'll give it to you. So Jesus knew that he was not coming to take it. He was coming to replace. To bring it back to God. He was coming as a price. He came as a price to buy back the well to God. If you are hearing me say I'm hearing you. So that we don't get anything by bowing to Satan. Satan knew that if Jesus can bow, the plan of God will fail. will always bow to Satan when we need Satan. Right now we are in the world. This world we have overcome. It. Let's live like an overcomer. Let's live like a winner. Don't live like you are defeated. Don't live like a person who's lost. Because God wants you to live in this world. According to God's plan that he had before Satan took over. This time Satan is defeated. The world belongs to God. You belong to God. The Bible says heaven and earth belongs to God. Silver and gold belongs to God. Why? Because Jesus came and the world has been taken. The reason why it has been taken 
for us to live in this world not living like we are beggars we live as children of God whether we are blessed or not we are blessed whether we are sick or not we are healed I don't know if you are hearing me if you are hearing me say amen so this verse John 3 verse 16 it take us back to the original plan where the world whether we have all in this world we don't lose character we don't lose character because we want to make sure that when this world will pass we will be with Christ let's look at this verse we stop with. John 17 I just want us to look when Jesus was speaking about the world we'll read from verse 1 yes it says when Jesus had spoken this thing he raised his eyes to heaven in prayer and said father the hour has come glorify your son so that your son may glorify you just as you have given him power and authority over mankind now glorify him so that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him to be his permanently and forever now this is eternal life that they may know you the only true supreme and sovereign God and in the same manner know Jesus is the Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you down here on the earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Now Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory and majesty that I had with you before the world existed. Can you hear that? I was reading this verse. Uh, this verse is this morning. The whole chapter 17. chapter 17. I want us to read, continue, but I want to stop and explain something. After Jesus spoke with the disciples on chapter 16. You know, you have tribulation. But know that I've overcome them. Jesus began to pray this prayer. He prayed this prayer. I say, Father, the Bible says he looked up. I say, Father, I have finished your job. You know, it is not easy when someone is going to die. So. I've done everything. I've we finished. normally want to fight. For if you want to know that, ask nurses who are working. I, I want to tell you the secret. You know, when your time comes, it's a very difficult time. They just come and do like this to you. You see, angels will just come. And, and from there you won't talk. You, you are seeing them. And you can't talk. The state you are. You won't say, eh? I'm seeing this. I, they just do like this. And from there they come and hold you. And come out with you. The body will be left kicking. Because the heart will have to be going down. But you, you will be gone. I don't know if you're hearing me. I mean, it's so amazing to find Jesus coming to tell people, say, hey, the hour has come. Verse 4. Verse 4. Uh -huh. I have glorified you down here uh -huh. and the earth by sorry on the earth by completing the work that you gave to do, me to do. Uh -huh. 
Now, Father, uh -huh. glorify me together with yourself, with the glory and majesty that I had with you before you the that? world existed. You know what Jesus was saying? There were things that when Jesus was looking, he said, but when I was having that glory, this was simple for me to be. Jesus was limited when he was here. But but look at the miracles he has done. But the glory that he was having was limited. And what I'm trying to say is, I believe Jesus was excited. Because he knew there's the another glory. He knew there was the another glory. He knew there was the another glory. When he said, Father, the hour has come. I don't think tears were going down. Because he said, glorify me. With the glory I have before. Before, I just have. And things happen. In here, in the world here, I just find myself I have to take a step. Before, I just say, I'm going there and I'm there. The glory was so amazing. Shocking. But Jesus was saying, I'm going back to that glory. Okay, let's give, let's give example. You have got three years and half. half. You are staying in a small shack. And then bathing in a basin. But the time when you are supposed to go back to your mansion. Would you, you will cry. Would you cry? So Jesus was excited. I remember in John 14, he says, in my father's house. There are many mentioned, but here on earth, Jesus, we never heard about Jesus' car. We never heard about Jesus' car. Jesus' house. So Jesus was excited. He was excited. It's only when now Satan began to come to tempt him. He tried to show him the cross. He was depressed. I, I don't know if you're hearing that. But when he was praying here, he knew he is living there. Read verse 5. Five. Five. Now, Father, uh -huh. glorify me together with yourself with the glory and the majesty that I had with you before the world existed. If I was hearing that prayer, I would say, oh, this man, we didn't know him. Father, glorify me before the same glory. Not this glory that we work on. Earth. The glory that I had before with you. The glory that functions the way you function. Because here on earth, the glory is limited. Can you see this world? Don't be surprised sometimes when you pray and you, and you don't get answers. It's because the glory is limited. And it goes by stages. I don't know if you're hearing me. It goes by stages. There's issues of paying the price and get the approval to go to a certain level. I was telling pastors that, you know, don't ever think that uh, pastoring is as easy as you You must pay the price. And after paying the price, the longer the preparation, it shows the longer the ministry. The the ministry is determined. He is he just wake up and say, I'll I'll come to people who come to this, is the, this is the world. There's the evil one here. So you must be prepared. And so that you find a certain 
glory that feeds your strength. One day you'll be able to say, I finished the work. When, when, when you finish the work, here, you don't finish the work of someone. You, you, you have been given your own work. And you have to work it. In this world, can you see you can? be so much biased. Sometimes you can be confused if, if you are looking around without knowing your understanding. When you are in this world, try to understand your assignment. So that by the time when you are supposed to leave it, you'll be able to say, I've finished the work. The hour has come. Otherwise, you know, that hour will come when you are still going for interview. You are still going for interview. And you have crammed the things of interview. On the road, the hour comes. And the when you wake up from there, where are you going? Where do you want to go to heaven when you are, you are misplaced? What do you want to go to heaven when you, you, you don't know what you are doing here? There has to be a revelation to understand that this world is passing. And yourself also you are ready to go. I know the reasons why you all of us here, we are not ready. Because there is breakfast. There is lunch. And there is dinner. <laughs> you, know, you know, Satan here is very dangerous. We are, we are not ready because of that. When, when do you want to go? Before you eat breakfast, breakfast. after you eat dinner, what? I mean, if we come and ask you the time you want to go from or this way, because lunch has taken you, lunch is controlling you, dinner is controlling you. Breakfast is really I mean, moving you. Breakfast is moving you. You can overcome this world. If, if truly you want to overcome this world from today, don't allow any problem you are going through to give you a direction. Tell your neighbor, don't allow any problem you are going through give you a direction. That's how you'll overcome. Because the moment when you are going through this, you will laugh at the problem. Because you know the end. You know that God has assigned you. Purposely is taking you. There. The child of God won't be afraid of any situation. If you understand that God is taking you there, how we show you how you make a blocks here. Do you, do you have fear of tomorrow? No. You know God is taking you there. You are a stranger. You are a if the worst can happen, it's when you leave from here. I don't know if you are hearing me. Carry on reading, Mama. You are reading verse what? Read six. Mm -hmm. I have manifested your name and revealed your very self, your real self, to the people whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept and obeyed your word. Can you hear that? Amen. Out of this world, I've taken some people to be part of me and make them to know your name. I mean, uh, I was telling some people that 
Our Christianity is really boring nowadays. Hey, receive a car. Amo receive a house. Even our prophecies are like that. I'm seeing you getting a car. I'm seeing you getting a job. Why would you get prophecies? I'm seeing you going to die tomorrow. Because dying is gain. Dying is gain. Why we don't have a prophecies like that? Why is not the prophet or saw bullet like a You are going upstairs. We are going to die. And then now we are prophesying issues of downstairs. You, you, you are going to have a, you are going to have a bed. We are now traveling bed. Why don't talk about a bed? Some people you are telling them. Why will they have a house? They don't even have a bed. Oba bucha ore oba to valin tumpeta usu ubiyo. The bed is from their father. Mpeto uta uba. Who was using the bed? Mama was using the bed. Mama was using the bed. Mama was using the bed. We now usu misha mpeto u. Let's prophesy issues of going home. Are we letting them achawi ya haye? A Christian who can seek the issue of going home. That Christian is kingdom minded. Kingdom minded. A kingdom minded Christian will say, hey, Jesus this world will pass. The car will go. The house will go. Everything will go. Everything will go. We don't have the issue of winning souls. Even Christians in the church. I'm sorry if I will tell you this. But I will. I've been saying this thing, but when I look at you, I used to think, I, sometimes I can say, you are Christians, but sometimes you are witches. You are witches. You are witches. Because how on earth you know the truth? You have not brought anybody to your church. You have not even brought. You are, you are so active in the church. Hey, we active. We do And the music is being played. And the music you are sure we have You dance and enjoy yourself. We are in our ipina. But you have never even brought anybody. You're a Christian, but you're a witch. I mean, if truly you are being entertained by the foretaste, what is happening in the church? It's a taste of what will happen in heaven. And still, you don't tell anybody. You don't tell anybody. At work where you are working, no one knows. In the church, you have got a position. But you can't tell anybody. Let's go to our church. The man of God, they will pray for you. We have got many, many. The church is not growing because of you people. Yeah, Lord, yeah, man. You are witches. Now you are the one that will have to change a church. You are not the one that will have to change a church. You are supposed to be staying in that church. And bring people to church. You are exchanging churches. Like you are eating banana. But you can't bring people to church. How can you know all these pastors? And you don't know why you are called. Why many of you are called. We are in a church where you people, you were supposed not to be hiding the truth. Or cursing in this world. Our blessing, give me blessing, I want to show them. Which ones? The moment when you gave the grace of understanding this word. Oh my God, you will understand that everybody here might be busy with what he doesn't know. Have you ever found you are so busy going to work? Doing because whatever you are working for, someone will take over. Let me try to tell you what will really bother you. 
what you are working for, the clothes you have, someone will take this thing. Because the world is passing. The world is passing. We need to wake up. Today. Let's wake up. Understand this world is going. We are busy fighting each other by the things of the world. Accusing, accusing each other by the things of the world. Mama, can you read? I don't want to talk too much, but I wish uh, you people here. You, you, see, you need to know that. You see these hairs you put on your head. One day your sister will take it. You thought your permission. Of course. We are so much busy with this world. This world that is passing. Carry on reading, Mama. Verse 7. Now at last... They know with confident assurance that all you have given me is from you. It is really and truly yours. I'm sure that's what we know, isn't it? Jesus is Messiah. Yes, Messiah. Okay, carry on, Verse 8. For the words which you gave me, I have given them, and they received and accepted them, and truly understood with confident assurance that I came from you, uh -huh. from your presence, and they believed without any doubt that you sent me. By God, yes, carry on. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. Oh my God. Did you hear something there? Jesus says, I pray for them. Jesus is still praying for us. He says, because they don't belong to the world. I don't pray for the world. I pray for them. Sometimes we need to stop praying for ourselves. We take what Jesus is doing. We also pray for others. No way is pray for us. You know, I found that the moment when we begin to seek the kingdom, seeking God, seeking Him is not so much. If we are praying for them, we are praying for them. We are praying for them. It's part of seeking the kingdom for them. If we pray for ourselves, we are searching for something. You know, and this thing that we are searching for, what do you remember it? what I was saying? We are spending time on ourselves. Praying for ourselves. Oh, give me anointing. Oh, give me a car. Give me a good. After all these things are there, they are going to be a temptation. Seek the kingdom. Pray for them. Because they belong to God. Carry on, Mama. Verse 10. Uh -huh. And all things that are mine are yours. Verse 11. And all things that are mine are yours. And all things that are yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. 11. I am no longer in the world, yet they are still in the world. Can you hear that? Jesus said, these people, they are still in the world. But he was with them. But he says, but me, I'm no longer in the world. Jesus was saying, a man, to be in the world, is because of his assignment. Me, I finish my assignment. I'm no longer in the world. There's nothing I can do. I'm not talking to you about the world. Are supposed to be healing people. Feeding people. I'm no longer in the world. 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 I'm no longer in the world.
me try to tell you what uh, this is very good for you. When you grow old, how so fun? You grow old. How so fun? Like uh, 70, 80. You realize that you want to go. But you no longer good. In fact, people say life starts at 40. But because your body began to react. You know, if your body began to react, it tells you that you are old now. When you were young, you used to steal sugar. You just do your, 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 your finger like this. And when you were speaking, that's how you yeah. And you go out like this. And then, and when, when nobody is seeing you do like this. Later, you begin to hear about diabetes. When you start to be 40, you begin to hear their disease. Disease. You begin to say, hey, I can't eat this. And other people are younger eating. But when you are old now, there are things that you won't be able to eat. And those things are telling you that you are not here forever. Entertainment is not here forever. One time, my spiritual father, <laughs> he told me something that I didn't understand. But understanding now. He look at me and says, I want to tell you something. Do you know that you won't be a man forever? I says, I'm a man. He says, oh, you won't be a man forever. He says, oh, you mean I'll be a woman? I said, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, uh, you won't be a man. You will understand when you reach there. Because, you know, what we are trying to protect, try to put our position ourselves. One day, we will lose it. To show that we are dying. To show that we are dying. When you are a child, Start to celebrate birthdays. You are dying. Wow, You see when you are you are buying a cake and your child says, I'm this age. And when a child says, when I reach this age, I want to be like this, telling you that you must be dead. I said, no, you are not dead. You are alive. 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 You are you, you have to exchange. Your fathers Rate, I mean, gave you that. You give that to your children. Your children's children. In 100 years, there's five to six generations. Five or six generations. I don't know if you're hearing me. So when 100 years come here, others will be coming. Others will be preaching. Whatever we are here for, what we are doing here, other people will be doing also. So we are not here forever. We are not here forever. So deal with yourself. We are a visitor here. Don't allow this world to overcome you. There is home. This is no home. Your house is not home. Your house will be taken by wind. Prepare yourself. Always because you don't know the time. You don't know the time. God loves you. Carry on reading with close mama. Verse 11 again. I am coming to you. Uh -huh. Holy Father, keep them in your name. The name which you have given me. So that they may be one just as we are one. We are not even one. We are three. 
are so much divided. We are not even one. Because what makes us one is love. I will tell you in this world, this is a world that people love to copy. 